and welcome to BBC School Report. First, we have a story about the top 10 trending apps and how children are becoming antisocial because of them. The top 10 trending apps are Crossy Road, Burning Blade, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Facebook, Candy Crush, Saga, Skype, Snapchat, BBC Media Player and Instagram. Thank you, Phoebe. I'm now going to interview Zach. Do you feel you're 100% safe while going on these apps? Um, probably not because you can get people that you don't know speaking to and trying to add you as a friend. What do you think makes an app trend quickly? Um, well, if it's something like Facebook, people just use them to communicate with each other, but if it's a game, it has to be entertaining. Like younger and older people. Do you find you become antisocial when you're on your phone? Uh, I guess so. I don't really speak to people around me on my phone. I don't want to trade on what I'm doing. Are these apps really safe? Are we entering an antisocial generation? Have you heard of the Duke of Edinburgh Award? Students here at the Petersfield School certainly have. Over to Beth. To here we have Mr. Alvarez, who's in charge of DUV at GPS. Why do you like DUV? Uh, DOV gives them the opportunity, every student in the school, to uh, experience something new. Uh, from the skills part to the physical, to then go on expeditions with their friends. Do you need any special skills to start it? No, the best thing about it is, all you've got to be is 14 years of age and anyone can take part. So it's an opportunity for all walks of life to uh, take part in something uh, exciting. So do you think uh, more people should do it? Definitely. I think everyone deserves the opportunity. Mr Curtis, the DUV leader. So Mr Curtis, can you say a little bit more about DUV? I'm sure. The uh, Duke of Edinburgh scheme uh, is a scheme designed for young people uh, to help them develop their sense of uh, teamwork um, and, uh, and self-reliance on their own skills. So they do um, uh, a physical strand. They go off and do something like play football and so on for a while. They do volunteer work and uh, they also work on a special skill. Um, in addition to doing that, though, there's also um, an expedition that they do that uh, incorporates uh, map reading and working as a small team, uh, and then pitching a tent and cooking a meal, and um, so it's all about developing your outdoor skills as well. So you think DV is worthwhile and more people should do it? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, apart from the whole thing about young people being able to do something which really develops themselves as people, um, it helps that when they leave, they can actually have that on their CV, and they can show it in front of a prospective employer, and go, look, there you go, I'm prepared to work hard, I'm prepared to uh, go off and find things out myself, and uh, I'm someone who can really rely on. Thank you, Stratus. Thank you. Is he a DUV participant? Do you like DUV? I find it hard, it's at a point in the year when GCSEs are taking place and lots of revision is happening, um, and it does take a lot of time that I've spent time. Uh, I don't always enjoy it, the teachers take it quite seriously. Okay. Thank you, Matt, do you enjoy magic tricks? If so, you may just be in luck with our next segment. Now over to Toby, who's interviewing Miss Colenso. Thanks, Phoebe. I'm currently sitting opposite the orchestrator of the event, Miss Colenso. Now, Miss, in a few sentences, describe who or what is the master magician. OK, we've brought in a magician called Martin Duffy. He's a professional magician. He spends his life doing parties, but also going to schools, doing magic. But he's particularly coming in linking maths and magic today because they are they all go together, so he's doing that today. And so why do you think it was a good idea for students to bring in the maths magician? I think it's lovely for people to get excited about maths, to see that it's fun and to learn that they can go and do tricks on people, that they can kind of sneak up on their parents and do a bit of magic. It makes more things much more fun and exciting. Thanks, Miss. Have you enjoyed the day so far? If so, what have been your highlights? Okay, I've really enjoyed it so far. I've enjoyed the excitement and the wow that comes out of people. The fact that when Rebecca opened the lock and she went, oh, it was great. And the fact that people come into my classroom afterwards going, I've been doing it on everybody else. That's good. Miss Kelenzo, thank you for your time. Your time. It's a pleasure. Thank you. I'll now be interviewing the mass magician himself. I'm here with the legend that is the mass magician. So, why did you decide to become an entertainer? I love making people laugh and um, one of the best things about doing this job when I come to schools and doing it is I can make them laugh and you can learn at the same time. So how much do you enjoy the job? What is the best part? I love my job because it, if you find a job you love doing you never have to work again because you and do it, you're doing what you enjoy doing and people are enjoying what you're doing as well if you do it right. And how can we find out more about your works? Um, well, my website is martinduffy.com, 
Okay. And you can also Google Maths Magic and you can find out about what we've been doing at the school today. Okay. Thank you for your time, sir. About how frequently phones and tablets are being used daily by children. This report may surprise you. Over to Amy. Hello, we're going to ask you a few questions. How much time, on average, do you spend on your phone slash tablet? Um, probably about six or seven hours. Okay. On average, how much do you watch TV? Um, two to two and a half hours a day. Okay. How much devices do you have, such as computers, tablets, phones, TV? Well, yeah. I have my phone, my tablet, the computer, and the TV, so it's probably about four. And what do you use your devices for? Um, homework, talking to my friends, social media, and uh, entertainment. And thank you for answering our questions. Hello, and today we're going to interview you about phones and tablets. Right, so how much time on average do you spend on a phone and tablet every day? Um, I'd say about half an hour. Half an hour, okay. Um, how much um, devices do you own at home? Um, well, I have my TV, phone, and sometimes my mum's computer, so two or three. Okay, and what sort of phone do you have? Um, I have... Um, so I it's have not a touch screen then. Yeah, Nokia, I think it's a Nokia 105. That's good. Okay, so do you think that your phone or tablet is getting in the way of your school homework? Or? Oh, no, not at all. Actually, I think it helps grades because um, you get the homework done, you can practice maths, English pretty much every lesson. If people want to do homework on it and just used it for games, like, and all the time, wasted it, do you think it would be as useful? No, not at all. I'd say it would be, if people just used it for that, those reasons, then it would be quite horrible and everybody would be actually quite dumb. Okay, well thank you for um, talking to me. Back to the shoot. One in three children spend 15 minutes a day on phones and tablets before they can talk. Children aged 2 to 4 watch television around 2 hours a day. Mobile phones increase the risk of brain cancer. On average, an 18 year old spends 7.5 hours a day consuming media. A story about BYOD, which entitles students to bring their own tablet or computer to school. Over to our correspondent, Poppy. Thank you, Phoebe. I'm here at TPS to discuss the matter about bringing your own device to school. Teachers have agreed that students are allowed to bring their own devices to school so they can research information about things related in class. Now I will pass over right to Eleanor who will be interviewing what the teacher who came up with bringing her own device and some of the students. So what exactly is BYOD? BYOD is bring your own device. It's a chance for students to come into our school with their own equipment that they prefer to use and use it to enhance their learning. Do you think the students will learn better with this technology? We found with the use of iPads and Chromebooks in lessons that it had an effect on how fast students could access information, how quickly they could take the content the teacher was used, given to them and then use that in their own projects. And how do you think the students will react? Again, through the trials we've done, they've it clearly has a, a, the engagement we were looking for. Students are very used to using technology, so it was a, we were able to suddenly work with things that they enjoy using as a tool. Thank you. Do you like the idea of BYOD? Yeah, I think it's a really good tool that will help enrich our learning. Do you think BYOD will help you learn better? I think it will because it will help with your homework inside and outside of school if you want to like research something outside of the lesson but carry, on, carry it on at school as well. I don't like the fact that when people bring their own devices in, some people aren't going to treat them with the respect that they deserve because if someone's got it in their bag and then their friends take their bag or something, it's likely to get damaged and then in lessons um, children might not actually be doing their work and they might just be playing games. Do you have Facebook, Instagram and Snapchat? If you do, then you'll know the risks of cyberbullying. But just how much do you know? Over to our technology correspondent, Alec, for more information. 
Thank you, Phoebe and Harry. First, let's have a look at some statistics. Nearly 43% of kids have been bullied online, but only 1 in 10 of them have come forward. These new statistics are extremely shocking and highlight an already growing pattern. Now, we're going over to our interviewee Charlotte, who is going to interview Mr John Lodge. Do you think that cyberbullying is more common because it's easier to get away with? Yes, I, I think it's, it's more common because it's easier to get away with, but also because students have more access to the internet and sites. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a combination of factors, but the fact that there are, you're less likely to get caught is a main one. Do you, do you think that teachers have the training to deal with the issue well? I think that um, there's two answers to that really. One, that specialist staff do get the training that they need. So if you think about our school, like myself, Mrs Hepworth who works over the inclusion room, the heads of house who work in the pastoral office, those teachers have training to do with dealing with and tackling bullying and cyberbullying. However, I think that more could be done to support other teachers, your English teacher, your maths teacher for example, who don't deal with pastoral issues every day, whose main role is to teach English or maths and they spend half an hour a day doing being a form tutor, those sorts of things. So, um, so yeah, I think there is a bit of work to be done there. Do you think that everyone who is cyberbully will come forward? No, I don't. I, I think that lots of people that cyberbully don't come forward because they're embarrassed about what's happened to them or afraid if they tell somebody that it will get worse. Um, so I think that we only really get to know a small amount of what's really going on. Thank you. As you can see, cyberbullying remains a big issue in today's younger society. Thank you.